first program that looks like this. Now, all these programs are taken from a part of code from a CNC lathe. We can tell that because we're using a speed clamp here with the G50. So, so this is a section of a lathe program. So what we're gonna look at is the different ways we can write this, but it's all the same thing, really. So this bit of code here, we can see straight away that he's using GO1 after each uh, line where we could have just put it on this first line here and omitted it on these ones, but it's not a problem. It would still run. And the same as this GOO here, we could omit it from this line here, but it's not really making that much difference to our code. It's still gonna run. It's hardly taking up any more characters and it's not gonna change the cycle times. Okay, so let's compare this one with a different example. Okay, so this section of code now, we call this number two. And we'll call this number one. This, uh, this code in number two here is pretty much what I was saying about omitting the unnecessary rapid movements and the GO ones. So here we've only got uh, the one G00 and it's not on this line, which is fine because it's already active when it reads this second line here. And then the same with GO1 here, we use it once and then it's not repeated on the following lines until we change into G00. So this is the way I would tend to write my programs, but it doesn't mean it's right or wrong compared to the others. It's just my own personal preference, my own style. So as we go down this list, we can see nothing else has really changed. It's just the fact that he's omitted GO1s and G00s where they're not necessarily needed. Okay, so let's have a look at a third type of style we can program G-code with. So this program is pretty much the same. I mean, we've um, put things on singular lines here, which is fine. In fact, I like to see this because it makes it clearer and easier for the operator to read. And again, it doesn't slow down the program. It just spaces things out on separate lines. So that's what he's done here. Rather than having this big long line here, he's broken it down into sections. Now, the only thing I don't like about this program is there's no decimal points after these numbers. Now, this generally is not that important anymore, but I have run a machine, it was very, very old, and if we didn't add decimal points after these numbers here, it would lose itself. It wasn't sure if this was Z6, Z60, Z600. Now, this is not a problem with the more modern machines, but after seeing that experience, I tend to always put decimal points after every number in an axis move. So this final program here is the same thing again, but a lot more stripped back. For example, instead of using G00 like we've used in the other three programs, it's been stripped down to just G0. It still works, it still reads it as a rapid command, it just uses less digits. And the same for our M codes here, M3, for example, M8, all these are abbreviated versions that still does run on modern machines writing like this. I also want to point out here that we've also added a decimal point after our axes moves, even though there's no zero next to it. Now, uh, that's fine also because the machine will read that as six and won't mistake it for 60. Now, again, this only happens on certain old machines. It would misread this but it's good to be safe. So this final program here is stripped back. So the idea of this is back in the olden days, again, we had a serious issue with memory and space in the machine's memory. So by using less digits to write G00 and our axis moves, we would be able to create more space to hold larger programs in the machine. Now that's not a problem anymore. Storage is cheap, memory is cheap, and our machines hold massive CAD CAM programs. So we don't need to worry about being very, very strict with the way we write our programs. But all four of these programs is perfectly fine and would run perfectly safely. And it would all take around the same amount of cycle time to produce our part. So looking at these, none of these is in fact wrong. They're all right. They're just different ways of writing the same thing. And a lot of programmers have different styles and it also depends a lot on their age and what machines they've run in the past. So programmers such as myself that has uh, more experience working with older machines would more than likely program something along the lines of this style because it's what we're used to. It's what we used on the older machines like this because it's more stripped back. But there is no 
wrong program on this slide, they would all run and it doesn't matter at all really. It's just down to the programmer's personal preference and personal style that has been dictated over the years of different machines that they have operated, programmed and set.